little bit of a jam with you maniacs. And I washed my hair today, having a bit of a, a nice good hair to a good hair day today. So I thought I'd get on and play some riffs for you. I'm only, only going to do one session. Uh, I'm only going to do an hour. Um, you know, because I've got things to do, people to see, and whatever. So. Uh, the final countdown, that's a good one. Let's do the final countdown. See if this one's going to behave. There you go. So yeah, I was just saying to someone, 
someone, uh, my clean tone is just rolled down on the pot on the on the guitar. So. Uh, So I've got some guitars on the A rig, some guitars in the B rig. I've got some guitars at home. I've got some guitars in in the UK. I've got guitars everywhere. I don't keep a guitar collection all in one place. So uh, Deep Purple, that's a good idea. Deep Purple. Let's do. Um Thank you. 
harmony. It's, that's a good one. We don't get that one very often. It's, um... <laughs> Doctor, we do Megadeth and Metallica. I've always been a huge Metallica fan, more than a Megadeth fan. I don't know much Megadeth. I was always, always, always been a huge um, Metallica fan. James Hetfield was one of my um, biggest influences, one of my top five influences, personally. Uh, the Doors, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that might be you. You're right. Let's, uh, do some easy living. <laughs> Bestest friend, how about that? I feel like I'm 15 years old. My best friend, Davy, we used to play in bars and clubs around London for years and years and years and years. We used to do shitty bars and shitty bars and titty bars. There you go. That's a that's a memoir for you. That's my memoir. Shitty bars and titty bars. Although you know, well anyway. So anyway, we used to do it everywhere around the UK and, and London mainly. And I got the gig in Priest around 2011. Um, and a couple of years later, uh, my friend Davey, and I was actually the best man at his wedding. Um, so that's how, that's how close we are. Um, a few years later, he got the gig as the bass player in Uriah Heep. Unfortunately, Tre uh, Trevor Boulder died. And, um, and Davey got the, the, the bass gig in Uriah Heep. So, fast forward a few years, we're in Japan, I think, was it last year? I can't, I don't know what year it is now. I think it was last year. Uh, we went out to Japan um, last minute to do a download. I think Ozzy pulled out of a download uh, festival in Japan because of uh, health. And uh, Uriah Heap were doing a gig down the road from the hotel. So we went down to see Uriah Heap, me and Andy Sneak, funny enough. We went down to see uh, Heap. And, um, and they got me up to do a song and we played uh, Easy Living together. And it was really great to get back up on the stage with Davey, my pal, who'd, uh, who'd been through thick and thin with me, you know, um, through all those bars. Sometimes you, you play, a, play a gig and you don't want to, you know, you want to be at home, you know, writing your own stuff or whatever it may be. And you're in some shitty bar somewhere um, playing the songs you don't really want to play. But we did it and, and uh, the good thing about that was we both got opportunities and... Uh, ended up in, in fantastic uh, legendary band. So it was good to get up and play with, with Davey and Mick Box, who's a legend, and Phil Lanzen and, and Russ Gilbrook and everyone in the band. So, so yeah, that was a small story there that no one asked for, but I gave it to you anyway. So uh, what have we got here? Um, the Animals, House of the Rising Sun. Every time someone asks for that, so. <laughs> Thank you. 
10 minutes, so I'm going to play that for you. Um... <laughs> Alexander the Great, tool, tool. Someone asked me earlier on if I played with Adam Jones. Yes, I think it was January this year, Adam asked me to um, come down to a, a gig at the Bridgestone Arena and um, and do a song with him. So I got up and done Jambi with Tool, and it was rocking. Let me see. Uh, UFO lights out. Yeah, we have two requests for UFO lights out. <laughs>
Castle in Camden. Yeah, that was one of the uh, the shows we did. That was the, the residence we, residency we did uh, in the cover band for the uh, best part of 10 years. And I, I think um, the band done it before I was doing it. I came back in 2000, 2001 uh, from overseas and um, the band were already playing there. And I think they went from like once a month and then when I came back, we went to twice a month, so once every two weeks, and then we went to once every week. Um, and it turned into a residency for the best part of two years, and I think they're still doing it. Um, so yeah, and we used to do it, we used to start at about three o'clock in the afternoon, and we used to finish around 12 o'clock, 12.30 in the morning. So it was a good workout, like all day, you know, uh, for years. Um, so yeah, you really sort of get your 10,000 hours in, you know. Go save the queen. And I said, don't wash it. But today I washed it and it looks all right. So I don't know whether that one holds water anymore. But um, anyway, enough about that. Hell's Bells. <laughs>
thing that people ask me all the time about P90s, and the good thing about P90s, you've got to dig in a bit more. I've got the front end of the amp cranked up a little bit more to give a little bit of gain. Uh, they're a bit cleaner. So to compensate, I put a bit more gain on the front of the amp. Of the amp. And you've got to dig in a little bit more, but they're really, they're really characteristic. I really like the single coil P90s. Acacia Avenue. <laughs>
who knows? <laughs> That, uh, that I own, and uh, the, the the effects of whatever's in the amp. So I've just got I've dialed in some chorus and some reverb and some delay, and I couldn't tell you couldn't tell you what it is. But live at the moment, I've been using the yoga for a few years. I think we took the yoga out. I think the yoga took a shit. Um, so I, I, it's probably a carbon copy, an MXR carbon copy. So I've been using an MXR for about five six years. Solo on the prisoner, that's cool. Right. I would say 
I would say punk rock, because out of punk rock came the new wave of British heavy metal, really. Uh, but then again, you know, out of grunge came things like Alice in Chains, and, but then there was Maiden that came out of, you know, I would say, I would say punk. What do I think about Brian May? He's not a bad guitar player, ladies and gentlemen. You should go check him out. I think he's got a career. <laughs> decibel levels and we clocked the Marshall Plexi at 130 decibels in the in the room um, so yeah it's pretty fucking loud I mean not only is it loud but the the the, the way the amp sits EQ wise is just fucking deafening it's wicked I, I mean I like a loud guitar but that was that was unbelievably loud I mean I don't know what that could compare to. I don't know what like a jet engine is. If you looked up on Google what a jet engine is, how many, decibel, uh, how many decibels a jet engine is, I'm sure that plexi was louder than a, a, a jet engine. Which is why I profiled it so I don't have to sit in a room with a 130 decibel plexi. This is the, the profile of that plexi, so that's what you're getting. <laughs> gunshot decibel did someone just look that up is that what it is I mean have we got any comparisons we've got like a I mean if a plexi is as loud as a gunshot that's fucking heavy metal you know what I mean <laughs>
a mag that's a four forty four Magnum territory. That's freaking loud. I mean, that's pretty cool though. That a, a Marshall Plexi, a Marshall, a rock and roll guitar amplifier is as loud as a, as a, as a Magnum. That's wicked. <laughs> up there in jet taking off territory. Okay now. <laughs> Ever played on any of Glenn's Hamers? Of course. Of course. Favourite Black Sabbath song? Sabbath Bloody Sabbath, I think. I think. Uh... <laughs> Tony played that, and I can't play it on here because I've got a whammy bar, but he obviously he bends the bottom note, but he also, he, he frets the note. <laughs> Cesar has showed me two riffs. It's um, again, I can't do it on this one because I'm not in the right tuning. But it's uh, the Jambi riff. You know. The... <laughs> that's not right. 
right, I'm in the right tuning, but you get the idea. And um, 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 what was the other one we were doing? Iron Man. So yeah. See, the Gibson guys are showing me riffs. Shouldn't it be the other way around, Maniacs? But it's not. How fucking genius is that? Sorry. Do I like Jakey Lee? <laughs> Play some riffs, play some tunes. So I, I'm um, I'm on, I'm playing guitar a few hours a day, but I don't I don't kind of clock the hours or look at it like that. I'm just always practicing, and it could be it could be solo stuff like lead stuff, it could be uh, chord stuff, it could be chord textures or different things. So there's no really set routine, luckily. <laughs> coming along well there's a, there's a pandemic at the moment so we can't really do much on it but uh, but you know as soon as we can all get together then I'm sure we will <laughs> Or 11 to 48, really, but uh, my touring set is 11 to 50. Just to be awkward. <laughs> Glenn and KK or Murray and Smith? Bloody hell, I mean, that's a tough one. I would say back in the day for me, it was Murray and Smith. Maybe that's why I got the gig in Priest, because I didn't sound like them. But um, uh, yeah, for me growing up, for me, growing up for many years, it was all about Maiden and Metallica, and that was it. They were my they were my two my two gods. Um, and then, um, obviously, you know, all those double guitar bands like Thin Lizzy, Priest, uh, Maiden, even Wishbone Ash, bands like that, they were all um, hugely influential. But I just listened I listened to Maiden religiously every day after school. I used to come back and, and learn the. Live off the death record and play along to. I used to on the, on the live version. You've got uh, split channel, so you've got Davy on one side and Adrian on the other. So I'd learn Davy's bits and then turn him off and play along with the band, so to speak. So, uh, um, so yeah, I was huge into Maiden. So, I mean, I'd definitely say Murray uh, and Smith were more influential on my playing uh, than Glenn and Ken. Just. But again, maybe that's why um, maybe that's why I got the gig because it was it was slightly different, you know. If I was if you know if I was a if I was a clone, maybe I, I wouldn't be talking to you maniacs now. Who knows? If the phone is as good as Gibson, honest answer. Obviously, there's two different types of guitar. I mean, it, whether it's good as one is whatever you think, you know. Um, it's all subjective. Um, this is an Epiphone, I'm playing that, I've got Gibsons behind me and I'm not playing them. What does that mean? Does that mean these are better? It means that these do the job that I want them to do. So, uh, so yeah. Better is subjective, whatever works better for you. I think uh, Yannick played an Epiphone on the last Maiden tour. So I, I don't know what that means, but um, you know. It's what, what's better for you, it's what's better for the job that you want to do. In, in this case, so there's a, there's, a, there's a white 79V over there, 
there's no whammy bar on it. So I need a whammy bar for doing this because you maniacs asked for songs that contain whammy bar stuff. So is this one better than that one? Um, you understand what I'm saying? It's, it's better for the job that I want to do. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. Do I find your lead lines by writing the rhythms first? Um, sometimes, most of the time, yes. Sometimes there are always exceptions to the rule. I always, you know, I can come up with um, lead lines and then put the rhythms to them. What acoustic do I own? I don't own an acoustic. session. I'm always kind of writing or I'm playing or I'm riffing or I'm playing UFO or free stuff and a, an idea will come, I'll get it, put it down and if it's working and I'll add to it, um, I will. If it doesn't, I'll just keep that riff and come back to it at a later date or I don't get any ideas but I don't really, you know, I don't, if, if you say I'm going to go in at 10 o'clock tomorrow and write a song, it's rare that that happens for me. Usually the, the ideas come and I've got to capture them and luckily I've got the facility to be able to capture them. And we all do, we can put them on our phones. If we've got an idea or a melody, we can now sing them or whistle them into the phone. You, know, you want to hear some of mine on the phone, they're hilarious. Uh, you want to hear me singing some ideas or whistling some ideas. But they, you know, they've, they've ended up on priest records so you never know when they're going to end up. It's just capturing those ideas wherever you are. And if you don't get any ideas, then just just play some, play some priest, you know. Do I know Tak? Yeah, we, uh, we met, I met Tak um, in Japan last time I was there. We were in a, a bar called um, Rock Rock in Osaka, which is, a, which is a, a favorite haunt of everyone who goes to Osaka. And he was there and uh, yeah, he came down to the show. I think he gave, he gave Glenn a guitar, one of his signature guitars. It was like a mini version of his signature guitar. It's a sweet, sweetheart, you know. <laughs> Yes, of course. Uh, if, if you remember them, show, shout them out and uh, I'll play one for you. Did Glenn show me how to play the riffs or did you learn the riffs myself? Well, I used to, as I've already said, um, I used to play priest in cover bands when I was a boy. When I got, on the, got in the band, we had to go over some stuff, me and Glenn, to make sure who plays what and what the actual notes were and stuff like that. So a bit of both, really. Uh, you know, I knew, like... You know, uh, new stuff like that. But there was other things that we had to go through together. So yeah, a bit of both. <laughs> other things as well like you know we change them we change up the the riffs slightly live I mean if you listen to Turbo Lover live it's it's a lot heavier um, and also I saw Adrian I've said this before as well I saw Adrian Smith on the Somewhere Back in Time tour they did uh, Number of the Beast and Adrian Smith down tuned the D uh, the E to a D for <laughs> Chunkier, so you know, we do stuff like that as well to make things heavier and slightly different and more dynamic than they were on the record live, you know. Oh, it's your birthday today, happy birthday! Let's do paint killer for you because uh, you asked for it. Thank <laughs> you. 
hasn't been down to South America, to, to Chile, uh, to Argentina, to uh, Venezuela, to anywhere down in South America, Mexico, anywhere like that, and been to a, a metal show or metal festival, you've got to go to one. It's absolutely off the charts. It's fucking great. It's like, you know, unbelievable. Unbelievable. The crowds down there, the atmosphere is just unbelievable. <laughs> Try to do Rob Scream. Yes and no. <laughs> Thanks for your suggestions. Thanks for your questions. Thanks for your sock, some of you. I know who you are. Yeah, anyway, um, I'm only kidding. <laughs> So um, I'm just going to sign off, keep playing um, until it kicks us off. So thanks again, and uh, keep throwing your suggestions out. Cheers, Jason. See you soon, brother. <laughs>